I love this particular question of the day because it actually combines two GED style problems that you're going to see all the time. One of them is um, comparing data displays, they call it. And so what we see here, you might notice that there's two different types of data displays you see in this problem. I mean, without even reading it, we can see that there's some line graphs here and there's some tables. Um, but there's actually a third uh, data display in this table. Let's take a look and read the word problem. It says the equation y equals 255x represents the gross sales y that Bling Bikes makes by selling x bicycles. Which data display shows a company that makes less money per bicycle than Bling Bikes? Okay, so there's a third type of uh, data display. Well, it's not really a display, I guess. You wouldn't think of it that way because it's not a graph, but right there, that is the equation of a line. So I see right here um, an equation of a line. And basically, probably the easiest way to realize that this is the equation of the line is that both my y and my x have no exponents on them. They're to the first power. Um, it gets a little more complex than that, but we're going to just settle on being able to tell that way for now. So um, this here is the equation of a line. And these here are graphs of lines. So we see a line represented mathematically. We see a line represented um, pictorially here. And then here, whether you realize it or not, and we'll look at how you can tell in a minute, but we actually see a line represented as a set of points here. And, you know, you it's a relationship between bikes and the amount of money you make, or bikes and the amount of money you make. So three different ways of looking at the same type of information. Now, so that's one way, one reason I like this problem, comparison of graphs. Other reason I like this problem, it's actually, whether you realize it or not, a slope application problem. Look at the question. It says, which data display shows a company that makes less money per bicycle? See that phrase, money per bicycle? We're talking about this relationship of the money and money here would be a dependent variable. Uh, per, per means divide uh, by the number of bicycles, and bicycles would be the independent variable. We're looking at the rate of change um, of the dependent variable as the independent variable um, increases or decreases. We are looking at slope on all of these graphs. Okay, or on all of these data displays. So let's take a look at the first one. It says y equals 255x. Um, now, if you look at this, what you're saying here is I'm going to make Y dollars for every I X bikes I sell. So if I sell one bike, I make $255. If I sell two bikes, I'm going to make twice this. Three bikes, three times this. That means my slope or the amount of money I make per bike here is $255 per bike. Every time my X goes up one, I make another 255 bucks. Okay, and you might recognize that from the y equals mx plus b formula, if that's how you remember slope. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's okay. I hope it's clear to see that this is $255 per bike. But some people have that memorized, that the number with x is the slope or rate of change. Now let's take a look at these other two graphs. One of the really nice things about bicycles, about these graphs, is that I happen to know if I were to draw this line out here, it would end in 0, 0. I love slope problems when zero, zero is one of the points because it makes it super duper easy um, to find the slope. Um, all you have to do is pick any point, literally any point, and do the independent variable over the dependent variable. In this case, money per bike. And it even says there, right in the phrase, money per bike. Per means literally divide. Okay, so let me find a good point on this graph where I can see about, I think this one looks like a good point. I can tell where I'm at here with the number of bikes sold, 12. And if I erase my money per bike over here, I can see my dollars here. See, this is gross sales in dollars, and that's 2,500. So my money per bike, I'm going to start with money. Dollars is money, so I'm going to start with $2,500. And I'm going to per that or divide that by the number of bikes sold. When I made $2,500, that was 12. And I'm going to bust out my TI30XS calculator. 
uh, to do this math for me. And I'm going to do 2,500 divided by 12. 2,500 divided by 12. And I'm looking at about, and you're going to see you get a decimal, but let's just call it about $208 per bike. I actually got 208.333333. But close enough for government work. Now, let's look at these other uh, data displays. Now, if you're um, catching on here, you realize that I already found the one that makes less money per bicycle than bling bikes, but it's not always going to be the first one we try, so I just want to show you how we can take a look at the others. So in this one, I'm making 40 bikes. When I make 40 bikes, I make uh, $12,000. So again, dollars per bike would be $12,000 per or divided by... 40 bikes and that one is $300 per bike pricey see how slope is just a rate of change now here you might be thinking again aren't these points don't I need to use the slope formula and I guarantee you that if you were to bust out the slope formula formula you would get the exact same answer I'm about to get right now there's nothing wrong with that way. These are points. This is like an X value and a Y value and another X value and a Y value. You could use any two of these points in a slope formula and you would get the same answer I'm going to get right now. But I'm being lazy because I know zero, zero is a point. I know that I make no money when I sell no bikes. And so because of that, I'm just going to divide through to find the bikes per gross with one of the points. And it could be any one of them. I'll get the same answer. So let's do it with this one. I'm going to take 5500 That's $5,500. And I'm going to divide by 20 bikes. $5,500 divided by 20 bikes is $275 per bike. Again, that shortcut method only works because 0, 0 is a point. Um, if I make no bikes, I make no money. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, I'll, it, again, it doesn't matter which one. Let's try 1240. So 1240 divided by 4. Uh, so $1,240 per or divided by 4 bikes gives me $310 per bike. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, what would happen if I used a different point? I tell, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter which point you use when you have zero. Like, well, what if we did tried this one? 4,960 divided by 16. Look, I would have gotten 310 still. Okay, so I can see the only one who makes less money per bike than bling bikes was Bruce's bicycle, making $208 per bike. So the answer here would be Bruce's bicycles.